Why was the former Prime Minister of Congo, Patrice Lumumba, murdered? How come the CIA and Belgian authorities had their hand in his assassination? Not only that, but what about Thomas Sankara, the revolutionary leader and president of Burkina Faso, and Muammar Gaddafi, the president of Libya? The list goes on and on, but in the assassination of these African leaders, we saw a pattern. All of them were threats to the West. In other words, they stood against the West's influence and exploitation in Africa, and became a challenge so big that there was no other option than to terminate them. That's when one starts to understand why most African leaders have remained silent and submissive to the West until now. But today things have changed, and African leaders are challenging Western dominance and rejecting and kicking them out of the continent. Leaders like President Ibrahim Traore and others have vowed to do what cost earlier leaders their lives. The West is not silent and is plotting against them, using covert and dirty tactics. So, what are the West plots and which African leaders are on the hit list? Let's know about that in this video. Number one on the West's hit list is Captain Ibrahim Traore. Ibrahim Traore, born in Kera, Bondokui, Muhun Province in 1988, received his primary education in Bondokui before attending a high school in Bobodiulaso. Known for his quiet and very talented demeanor, he pursued geology at the University of Ouagadougou actively engaging in student associations. Graduating with honors, Traoré enlisted in Burkina Faso's army in 2009, undergoing military training in Morocco before being stationed in Kaya. Having attained the rank of lieutenant in 2014, Traoré joined the UN peacekeeping force MINUSMA in Mali, displaying courage during rebel attacks in 2018. Returning to Burkina Faso in 2018, he contributed to operations against the jihadist insurgency, including the Otapuanu Offensive in 2019. Promoted to captain in 2020, Traoré became a spokesperson for discontented soldiers in the north, expressing frustration with the government's inadequate support. Traoré played a significant role in the January 2022 Burkina Faso coup d'état, supporting the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration military junta. Dissatisfied with junta leader Damiba's handling of the jihadist insurgency, Traoré and fellow officers attempted to refocus Damiba, but eventually opted to overthrow him. Traoré declared himself head of the junta and interim president in October 2022, committing to democratic elections in July 2024. As president, Traoré maintained a formal demeanor, carefully controlling communication to project strength. He expelled French forces in February 2023, expressing a desire for diverse international partnerships. Traoré's government endorsed a federation with Mali, inviting Guinea, and sought closer ties with Turkey and Russia. In April, he declared a general mobilization against rebel forces. Traoré questioned the planned restoration of democracy in 2024, stating elections depended on improved security. As the West knew Ibrahim Traoré was in no mood for election, which meant staying in power and challenging the West's dominance, they initiated a secret coup against him. Hence, in September 2023, dissatisfied military elements unsuccessfully attempted to overthrow Traoré. Suspected of ties to the Russian mercenary organization Wagner Group, Traoré denied collaboration and expressed pro-Russian sentiments. Following the 2023 Russia-Africa summit, Traoré announced the reopening of the Russian embassy in Burkina Faso. Despite allegations, the Traoré regime appeared inclined to rely on its own forces against jihadists and had not sought Wagner's assistance as of May 2023. He has been serving as the country's interim leader since September 30, 2022, succeeding the interim presidency of Paul Henry Sago. At the age of 34, Traoré holds the distinction of being the youngest current president globally, he has prioritized initiatives to enhance his nation throughout his tenure, avoiding exclusive alignment with Western interests. In February 2023, Traoré's administration expelled French forces combating local insurgency in Burkina Faso. This decision was followed by a proclamation expressing a willingness to explore alternative partnerships, strongly emphasizing fostering win-win collaborations and diversifying Burkina Faso's international relationships. Subsequently, Traoré's government supported a federation with Mali and invited Guinea to join. 
all three nations are presently under military leadership, and if the Union were to materialize, it would represent the largest country governed by military authorities. On July 29, 2023, following the Russia-Africa summit, Traoré conveyed the support of his people for Russia and announced the decision to reopen the Russian embassy, which had been closed since 1992. Traoré advocates for African heads of state to cease being manipulated by imperialists, asserting that Africa can prosper independently by leveraging its abundant natural resources to build a more robust continent. Since assuming leadership, Traoré has faced multiple unsuccessful coup attempts. Speculation persists that some of these attempts may be linked to Western influences, given Traoré's commitment to fostering an Africa less reliant on external assistance. Once again, authorities in Burkina Faso successfully foiled a coup attempt against the military rulers, with intelligence and security services playing a crucial role. The military leaders disclosed that a group of army officers and others had planned to seize power, potentially causing chaos. It was also announced that these soldiers had foreign backing, exposing the unsuccessful Western plots. The military prosecutor confirmed the arrest of four individuals, with two on the run, based on credible allegations of a plot against state security involving officers. This incident followed the earlier arrest of three soldiers charged with plotting against the ruling military government led by Captain Ibrahim Traoré. Despite these developments, Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, appeared calm, even after the announcement of the attempted coup. Demonstrators supporting the military government took to the streets amid rumors of a potential mutiny. It sent a clear message that any assassination or coup attempt against Ibrahim Traoré was impossible to be carried out successfully. Not only is it most difficult to replace Ibrahim Traoré, but also, due to his strong ties with Putin, he becomes a formidable leader that no one can think of confronting. If the West tries an assassination attempt against Ibrahim Traoré, it has to face the consequences from Russia, which it will never want. Number two on the hit list is Nana Ado, Dankwa Akufo Ado, the president of Ghana. At 79, he has been president of Ghana since 2017. Born on March 29, 1944, Akufo Addo boasts a substantial political history, having contested the presidency in 2008 and 2012 under the New Patriotic Party. After experiencing defeats in those elections, he secured victories in 2016 and again in 2020, successfully defeating the incumbent both times. While his government initially gained popularity for promoting a Ghana Beyond Aid agenda, it encountered challenges in the later part of his tenure, marked by severe financial crises and a decline in press freedom. However, he only ensured the suppression of Western media that spread propaganda against his country. On the subject of LGBT rights, Akufo Addo has adopted a relatively moderate stance. In November 2017, he suggested that the legalization of homosexuality might be inevitable in Ghana's future, drawing parallels with the evolution of LGBT rights in the United Kingdom. However, he clarified that it was not a current government agenda. As of August 2018, he reiterated his position that same-sex marriage and the decriminalization of homosexuality would not take place under his leadership. It's because his country and Africa, in general, won't accept the moral imperialism that the West wants the world to follow. He has advocated a stronger Africa free of the West's influence. Not only that, but he has consistently demanded reparations from the West and made it see its brutal history. He has also criticized the role of the United Nations as a lapdog of only the West, ensuring that such shady organizations never abuse his country. Because he speaks boldly, he is considered a threat to the West and someone who should be eliminated. Number three on the hit list is William Ruto, the president of Kenya. Born on December 21, 1966, William Kipchurchir Samoe Arab. Ruto assumed the role of the fifth president of Kenya on September 13, 2022. Before his presidency, he served as Kenya's first elected deputy president from 2013 to 2022. Previously, individuals in this position were referred to as vice presidents, appointed by the president. Ruto's political career includes holding three cabinet portfolios as the Minister for Home Affairs, the Minister of Agriculture, and the Minister for Higher Education. 
Ruto represented the Eldoret North constituency as a member of parliament from 1997 to 2007 under the Kanu and from 2000 Sintabudint through the ODM party. During the Daniel Arap Moy administration, he served as the Minister for Home Affairs from August to December 2002. In the Mwai Kibaki administration, Ruto was the Minister for Agriculture from 2008 to 2010 and the Minister for Higher Education from April to October 2010. During all this time, he concentrated on power and built alliances for his political future. Although he initially contested for the presidency in the 2007 election, losing to Raila Odinga in the ODM party primaries, he later supported Odinga's candidature. In the 2013 election, Ruto withdrew his presidential candidature in favor of Uhuru Kenyatta and was nominated for the deputy presidency, ultimately winning the election. He was re-elected as the deputy president in the 2017 Kenyan general election under the Jubilee party. In the 2022 election, Ruto successfully ran for the presidency under the United Democratic Alliance at Despide of Fallout, where Kenyatta supported his opponent, Raila Odinga. The election faced allegations of electoral fraud by Odinga's allies, though international observers did not corroborate such claims. During the Russia-Africa summit, President Ruto criticized the West's insistence on the attendance of all 54 African leaders, considering it both demeaning and ineffective. He proposed a representation of Africa through special envoys who engage with Western leaders more practically, fostering meaningful discussions beyond mere photo opportunities. Ruto stressed the importance of constructive dialogue and a more equitable platform for Africa's voice to be globally heard and respected. He argued that if meetings involving Africa and countries like the US, Europe, India, Turkey, Japan and Russia are not conducted differently, it's not intelligent for all 54 African leaders to gather before one individual from another place. He has also expressed reservations about Western influence in African affairs and has taken actions consistent with this perspective. Ruto has openly criticized what he perceives as Western interference in African affairs, particularly during international summits. Ruto has always stressed the need for Africa to assert its autonomy and resist imposition by Western nations. Ruto's political agenda is marked by a nationalistic approach, reducing dependence on foreign assistance and aligning with an anti-Western sentiment that envisions African nations standing independently without extensive reliance on external support. Ruto has also been vocal in opposing the legalization of LGBTQ rights in African countries, including Kenya. He consistently asserts that this issue is not a priority for his country, aligning with a more conservative and traditional stance that resists Western cultural influence on social matters. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Number four on the hit list is Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda. Paul Kagame is perhaps one of the most powerful presidents not only in Africa, but also in the whole world. Born on October 23, 1957, Paul Kagame has been the fourth president of Rwanda since 2000. Before his presidency, he served as the commander of the Rwandan Patriotic Front, a rebel armed force that invaded Rwanda in 1990. The RPF played a crucial role in the Rwandan Civil War and ultimately brought an end to the Rwandan genocide. Kagame assumed the role of Rwanda's de facto leader during his tenure as Vice President and Minister of Defense under President Pastor Bizimungu from 1994 to 2000, after which the vice presidential position was abolished. Born into a Tutsi family in southern Rwanda, Kagame's family fled to Uganda when he was two. He spent his childhood there during the Rwandan Revolution, which marked the conclusion of centuries of Tutsi political dominance. In the 1980s, Kagame fought in Yoweri Museveni's rebel army, risking to senior Ugandan army officer after numerous military victories led Museveni to the Ugandan presidency. Kagame later joined the RPF and assumed leadership after the death of the previous leader, Fred Ruigiema, on the second day of the 1990 invasion. By 1993, the RPF controlled significant territory in Rwanda, leading to a negotiated ceasefire. The assassination of Rwandan President Juvenal Habyarimana triggered the genocide, in which Hutu extremists killed an estimated 500,000 to 800,000 Tutsi and moderate Hutu. 
Kagame resumed the civil war and ended it with a military victory. During his vice presidency, Kagame wielded control over the national army and played a crucial role in maintaining government power while efforts to rebuild the country began. Pasteur Bizimungu resigned in 2000 following a falling out with the RPF and Kagame assumed the presidency. Bizimungu was later imprisoned on charges of corruption and inciting ethnic violence, accusations that human rights groups deemed politically motivated. According to the West, Kagame's rule is characterized as authoritarian, with human rights groups accusing him of political repression. It's because he does not take orders from the West, but keeps the West in its place. Foreign observers' opinions on the regime are mixed, and while Kagame has prioritized national development, critics highlight concerns about political freedom. Criticized for lifting term limits, Kagame confronted Western journalists and bloggers, often described as arrogant, for challenging their condescending attitudes. In his 2009 inaugural speech, Kagame emphasized that Africa's primary issue is poverty and dependence, resulting from underdevelopment. He expressed frustration with the international community's use of foreign aid as political leverage in Africa, stressing the need to ignore adventurers lacking legitimacy and connection to most people. He has expressed sentiments and taken actions that are seen as opposing Western influence in various aspects of his political career. Kagame has been outspoken in criticizing what he perceives as interference by Western nations in African affairs. He boldly announced, we are not people to be belittled and asked the West, how about those in your country who committed crimes in my country? He consistently remarks like, Africa does not need adult supervision, and Africa and Rwanda decide what we want for ourselves going forward. This makes him one of the most powerful African leaders who can challenge the West, and hence, he becomes a threat to Western dominance. Number five on the West's hit list is Yaweri Museveni, the president of Uganda. Yaweri Kaguta Museveni, born on September 15, 1944, stands as a prominent figure in Ugandan politics, military affairs, and revolutionary history. Since ascending to the presidency in 1986, he has wielded considerable power, despite widespread characterization of his administration as autocratic. He has continuously slammed the West's double standards and announced that China's diplomacy is better than the West's. This makes him someone the West should be scared of. And that's why the West has been plotting against him for years. Museveni's political journey took a dramatic turn after his defeat in the 1980 election, sparking the Ugandan Bush War that ultimately ousted Milton Obote. Scholars categorize Museveni's governance as a form of competitive authoritarianism or illiberal democracy. But these scholars are mostly from the West and are frustrated to know that he cannot be controlled. The media operates under governmental control, and elections in Uganda since 1986 have often been criticized for lacking transparency and freedom. The president's tenure has seen an uptick in anti-LGBTQ legislation, involvement in regional conflicts such as the First Congo War and Rwandan Civil War, the Lord's Resistance Army insurgency in northern Uganda, and noteworthy constitutional amendments including the removal of presidential term and age limits in 2005 and 2017, respectively. In the latest chapter of Museveni's rule, he secured a sixth term on January 16, 2021, with 58.6% of the vote amid allegations of irregularities like ballot box stuffing, inflated voter turnouts, and human rights abuses. Interestingly, all these allegations have been spread by the West to make him look like a dictator. He has signed a controversial bill criminalizing same-sex conduct, potentially including the death penalty for aggravated homosexuality convictions. This anti-LGBTQ law drew condemnation from both local and international rights groups and Western governments. But one thing should be known. The West won't decide what should be legal and illegal in Africa and the moral standards. To control him, the West has used all its tactics. For example, the World Bank, a crucial source of budget support for Uganda, suspended funding in August, citing a misalignment with its values. Recently, Joe Biden announced that Uganda will be expelled from the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act because its president is not willing to be a Western puppet. Museveni, who rose to power after a prolonged guerrilla war, harbors a robust anti-colonial sentiment. 
This feeling is rooted in the history of European colonialism in Africa, which has had a lasting impact on the continent. Museveni's resistance to what he views as external meddling can be interpreted as a response to Western power's historical exploitation and manipulation. He also advocated the idea of national sovereignty and self-determination. His anti-Western stance is often presented in the context of safeguarding Uganda's autonomy and opposing perceived efforts by Western nations to dictate the country's internal affairs. But this raises the question of how safeguarding one's sovereignty threatens the West. Museveni has, at times, expressed a desire for economic independence from Western institutions. This was highlighted in his response to the World Bank's decision to freeze funding due to the anti-LGBTQ law. Museveni's statement that Uganda would explore alternative funding sources and reduce reliance on foreign institutions reflects a determination to move away from what he perceives as economic. Dependencies associated with Western assistance. Number six on the West's hit list is Colonel Goita, the president of Mali. Colonel Asimi Goita, born around 1980, has been serving as the interim president of Mali since May 28, 2021. Initially, he led the National Committee for the Salvation of the People. This military force seized control in the 2020 Malian coup d'etat, taking power from former President Ibrahim Boubacar Keita. Subsequently, Goida assumed leadership from Baandao following the 2021 Malian coup d'etat and has been officially declared the interim president of Mali. From that day, he appeared as one of the most powerful African leaders. Thus, a sentiment to replace him surfaced in the West. On July 20, 2021, Goita encountered an attack by a knifeman while in prayer at the Grand Mosque in Bamako during Eid al-Adha celebrations. The assailant was swiftly arrested after failing to harm the president. Two individuals were detained in total, with one mistakenly believed to be the attacker's accomplice but later identified as a special forces soldier. Colonel Asimi Goida, Mali's interim president has displayed sentiments and taken actions that could be perceived unfavorable to Western interests. He has concentrated power, kicked out French troops and openly criticized the West. He initiated the operation to suspend all the elements that gave the West leverage in Mali to influence the politics. Therefore, he banned NGOs, as most of them were French and Western. He also suppressed Western media in the country, including Radio France International and France 24 implying an attempt to control the flow of propaganda. Colonel Goida's government also banned aid groups funded by France and ditched French as Mali's official language. Yes, he does not want charity, giving a strong message that he is more powerful than the West thinks. What do you think? Is the West strong enough to terminate all these powerful African leaders and get away with it? Or the days of West power are over, and now it's impossible for it to engage in any of these conspiracies? Let us know your thoughts on what these powerful African leaders should do, as they know the West is plotting against them. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.